This is the first clinical short case. You are asked to anaesthetise a 19-year-old man presenting with a fractured mandible for open reduction and internal fixation. Describe how you'd approach this case. Um, so I would um, take an anaesthetic history from the patient. I would see them pre-operatively. Pre um, I haven't actually anaesthetised a um, fractured mandible before, but I think um, I'd worry about a difficult airway um, so what would you look for in your assessment of the patient? So I want to take an anaesthetic history, I want to take a medical history from the patient. I want to find out if they've had any other external injuries. Um, so if they've been hit in the face, they might have um, an injury to the C-spine, they might have a brain injury. Um, so I, I'd want to do a full assessment to make sure that they haven't got a brain injury, for example. Well, he, he alleges he was assaulted in the pub eight hours ago and was briefly knocked out. Um, so in that case, I'd be quite worried that there is a brain injury. And so I would um, do an assessment. I'd, I'd ask them if they've, got, if they've been vomiting, if they've got a headache, if they've got any blurred vision. I'd do a full neurological examination. Um, I'd want to know whether they've had neuro observations mm -hmm. and I'd um, ask the surgeons to perform a CT scan of the brain before we thought about anaesthesia. Okay. So how long would you wait before you were satisfied that he was ready for surgery? Well, I'd want to make sure that an adequate period of time had gone by with neuro observations to make sure he's not developing a brain injury. Um, so I'd have to wait at least... Uh, I'll speak to the surgeons about what they, what, when they want to operate. I would um, speak to my consultant also. Um, Are you aware of any time constraints before the surgery needs to be done? Um, well, I think I'd have to be happy that there wasn't a brain injury before we did an, an operation or an anaesthetic. And what would reassure you that there are no problems? Um, so maybe a period of about 24 hours of neuro observations. Um, I'd go back and assess them again in terms of their neurology. Um, I'd ask the surgeons to perform a CT scan of the brain um, to look for evidence of injury in the CT. Okay. Let's assume there are no findings that suggest a brain injury. How would you carry on with your anaesthetic management of this patient? Um, so I'd give them a period of time of neural observations. Uh, I'd go back and reassess them. Um, for any other evidence of um, injury, so I'd check their C-spine, I'd um, go back and see if they've had developed any new symptoms. Everything's been cleared, the C-spine's been cleared, there's no neurological injury that's detectable clinically or radiologically. How would you anaesthetise this patient? Um, so I'd want to also check when I'm checking, doing the preoperative -pre assessment um, what their airway's like because if they've had a facial fracture, then they're likely to have, had, to have a difficult airway. So I'd want to um, do a full assessment of their airway, and I would um, speak to my consultant about doing an awake fibre optic intubation. The patient can only open their mouth three finger breadths. How will you anaesthetise the patient? Um, so if they can't open their mouth, then the likelihood is it's going to be difficult to intubate this patient. So I would co uh, consent the patient or counsel the patient about an awake fibre optic intubation. Um, I would speak to my consultant about doing that because I'd want him present when we do the awake fibre optic intubation. The fractured mandibles are not always impossible to open the mouths on once they're anaesthetised. Would you consider any other form of anaesthetic for this patient? Um, I think there is potential for a difficult airway and I think the best way to do it would be an awake fibre optic intubation. Are there any other alternatives at all that you might consider? We could, um, we could do a gas induction on the patient. Um, we could do a, a rapid sequence induction, but I'd have to be mindful that this is a difficult airway. What will the surgeons require of you for this procedure? Um, so they'd want to um, be able to perform the surgery um, relatively comfortably, so they might want access to the mouth. Um, and if I'm doing the awake fibre optic, then I could, I'd be nasally intubating them, so that might help them. 
On this occasion, the candidate received a 1 from examiner A and a 0 from examiner B. The candidate was unable to identify the key elements of the question that required addressing and allowed herself to be distracted by a head injury and the expectation of a difficult airway. She made slow progress through the question. Despite being given information that this was not a difficult airway, she decided to proceed with a fibre optic intubation. Although not an incorrect way of dealing with the problem, it was not necessary or ideal to do so.